Hello and welcome. Today, we're predicting the outcome of Florida State's 2023 football season. Every single game, every single matchup, and even matchups that won't be set until the end of the season. Every game. And I know what you're thinking. Damn nerd, you're a madman. Who would predict the outcome of the season before we even play the spring game? Well, this crazy idiot right here. So let's start by taking a look at Florida State. Coming into last season, Florida State was buried under the infinite disappointment of us Seminole fans. It had been years since Florida State was any kind of relevant. Hell, it had been years since Florida State had played in the ball game. We had suffered through the final year of Jimbo Fisher, who has progressively gotten worse, even in his time at A&M. And we had suffered through two miserable years of the incompetence that was Willie Taggart. It seemed that Florida State had fallen too far to recover. Mike Novell's first year wasn't a lot better as Florida State struggled during the COVID year, and the year after that, we managed a shockingly depressing 5-7. and seven. It seemed we were done. Stick a fork in the program. Coming into the season, I had pointed out in my previous schedule prediction video that I felt like it was a make-or-break year for Florida State, that it was the most important season. I went on to predict Florida State would win eight or nine games because I thought it was necessary for Florida State to win eight or nine games. Now, that team actually ended up going 10-3, and three, beating Oklahoma in the team's first ball appearance in a very, very long time. So the potential coming into this year is actually far greater. Florida State was able to bring back pretty much every key contributor of last year's team but safety Robinson who decided to go pro. A seminal fans wish all the best for him. But also Florida State added in substantial talent in several key positions. Quite a few actually. A lot of talent, honestly. And they did it mostly through the transfer portal. But let's not underestimate elite players like Hakeen, a receiver who is supposedly going to be the reincarnation of Julio Jones. We also got the most, most, most prized nose tackle in the entire transfer portal, a guy that Nick Saban tried hard to flip to come in to help with our defensive line. I do believe Florida State's defensive line in 2023 will be among the very best in college football. But the most important pieces came back. We were able to bring back running back Trey Benson. We were also able to add two running backs, one through the transfer portal from Penn State, who was a four-star player, and a four-star freshman, adding even more talent to our running back room. Also, running back Lawrence Tofili decided to return as well. And while Tofili is not the best running back on the team, he is a great all-purpose weapon. The man can catch the ball out of the backfield and is absolutely elite with the ball in open space. Now, last year, the offense of Florida State, I thought, struggled greatly to have superstar breakaway speed. That kind of speed where you throw a two-yard slant route, the receiver makes a guy miss, and he's just a house call. I do hope that receiver Hakeem the freshman, will actually be that guy. He ran a blistering fast track time, and he has a blistering fast 40 time. He's also a big man and a physical receiver. I'm also hoping that we see some more packages that feature running back Lawrence Tofili as a receiving threat and less as a running threat because I didn't feel like he was a very good running back last year. But I think he's a very good out-of-the-backfield receiver and a very good receiving threat. Hell, some packages that have both him and Benson in the backfield could actually be very interesting as you have the opportunity to flex Tofili out as a receiver while also having the option for Jordan Travis to hand the ball to Benson or pull it out and chuck it out to Tofili, allowing for a little bit more versatility. The other issue coming out of last year was the defenses collapsed in the final two games of the season as Florida and Oklahoma were more or less able to move up and down the field at will, scoring a whole bunch of points. This gives me a little bit of concern for the upcoming season as neither Florida or Oklahoma were particularly good teams last year. They are still Florida and Oklahoma. They are still talented. They are still you know, gold standard college football programs. But still, you would have expected Florida State to handle their business much better against both of these teams. However, admittedly, Florida had beat us five or six straight times, and we traditionally never beat the Sooners, so it's not as bad as all that. So, let's get to the first game of the year. 
the LSU Tigers come out to Orlando to play Florida State in what is an air quote neutral game site. I, I, it's definitely not. But last year we went out to the Superdome and played them in Louisiana and beat them. So last year this was probably one of the best games of the entire season as it came down to the a last second extra point block by Jarrett Verse, one of our very best players on either side of the ball. I thought this game last year, LSU Florida State, featured the very best and the very worst of Coach Mike Norvell. The very best is the massive effort the team gave from start to finish, playing hard each and every snap and never giving up. The very worst of Mike Norvell is his unwilling and unwavered ability to make smart coaching decisions at times. For example, after LSU fumbled the punt the first time, rather than kicking a field goal on fourth down and three, he decided to throw the ball to the end zone. And admittedly, it was very close to what would have been a touchdown. But adding that field goal would have been far more helpful at the end of the game. He also had several fourth down attempts in this game, including another boneheaded decision at the very end of the game following a fumble by LSU where all Florida State had to do was take three knees and kick a field goal to go up 10 with under 10 seconds to play but instead Norvell gets aggressive trying to score a touchdown and we fumble it and it almost allowed LSU to come back and beat us even though we had them absolutely buried. Now, obviously, this decision-making came to a head against NC State as his decision to throw the ball to the end zone when all we needed was a field goal cost us the game. So, I hope that Mike Norville has learned his lesson. We saw against Oklahoma, he really did run the ball three straight times and take a field goal, even knowing Oklahoma would have 15 seconds on the other side. And it worked. We won. So, LSU is a little bit worse for wear than we are. LSU only lost one or two key players to the draft. It wasn't really, it's not really the end of the world for them. Though most of their key contributors did come back, but LSU also suffered a whopping 19 players entering the transfer portal. While they did have a top 10 recruiting class, it's hard to replace that level of experience. Instead, you're dealing with a lot of young players. And while LSU starters are mostly the same, the depth is not quite where it used to be because now they're going to be forced to rotate in younger players. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Some younger players are fantastic and LSU may have the next great LSU defensive lineman as one of those younger players. We don't know. But neither do they. This team's a little bit, I feel like this team's a little bit less stable than they were to start last, last season. And a lot of the players don't like the coaching style of Kelly, which really isn't the end of the world. Uh, most of them transferred, obviously, so the locker room should actually be a little bit better this year. There should be less negativity for LSU in that locker room, less complaining from players who don't like the way uh, the way Kelly coaches. And when you look at the breakdown of Kelly's career versus the Seminoles, as I said last year, he has struggled big time against Florida State, which you actually see if you start looking closely at college football. A lot of times teams struggle against others. Florida State often struggles against NC State and Louisville, even when Florida State is a lot better than NC State and Louisville. For Kelly, he has always struggled against Florida State. He sub 500 against the Seminoles with the majority of his wins coming over very bad Florida State teams that wouldn't even make ball games. He has struggled to beat these teams. However, he always, always plays close games with Florida State. Extremely close games including what might have been the best game to start the season before this one, the season before the last one, the Florida State Notre Dame two-overtime thriller in Tallahassee. And for the third straight year, Kelly and Norvell opened the season against each other. So far, we had a 41-38 overtime win for Kelly and a 24-23 regulation win for Norvell. When you look at this game, it really could go either way, and it does feel like an important game for both teams, as I think both teams this year have honest, legitimate playoff aspirations, true playoff aspirations, not just the fans thinking they have a chance. So I do think getting off to a great start is important. The more I think about this game, 
the more of a hard time I have finding the differences between these teams. They're a lot alike. Both programs have struggled for the last four or five years. Both programs had what seems like renaissance years last year. And this year for both programs is critical to prove that they are back on that top level, back on the trending upwards, especially with recruiting. It's important, especially since both programs have new coaches. However, the difference between these two teams, I think, are actually in only really a couple key positions. I think Florida State has a better defensive line. I think Florida State has better running backs. And I know Florida State has a better quarterback. I also have never been entirely sold on Kelly as a head coach. I feel like he's a very good coach. But in these big, big moment games, which is what this is going to be, it's going to be like number six LSU versus number seven or eight Florida State. It's going to be on a solo Sunday night. It's going to be on an eight o'clock. Everyone in America is going to tune in to watch it. And I feel like Kelly has struggled in his career. Just go back go back a few years ago where they played Alabama in the national championship game and Notre Dame was crushed. A few years after that, they go to Tallahassee to play number one Florida State, get up 21 points, and then lose. Hell, even as recently as last year in the SEC title game, they lost by 50 points to Georgia. So I'm taking Norvell over Kelly. I have Florida State beating LSU by a score of 23 to 21. So that moves Florida State to 1-0. Now, something I want to point out before we go into the next game is managing expectations. For the last couple of years, the Seminoles' expectations have been bottom of the barrel. Make a bowl game, and we're happy. The expectation this year is playoffs. And I do believe a lot of people think Florida State is going to win the ACC and go to the playoffs. Now, you have to manage that as Norvell, and the coaching staff has to manage that. These players, for the first time in their entire time playing college football, are in a position coming into the season where people expect great things from them. That's a different kind of pressure than they're used to dealing with. And all those expectations will be coming to a head week two against Southern Miss. You see, the thing about Southern Miss is they're not your typical cream puff. They're not South Alabama or the Citadel. This is a decent group of five team. They do have some talent, and if Florida State comes in half ass sleepwalking, especially after a big win over LSU, they can get absolutely dominated and probably would still pull out a close victory, but it wouldn't be the dominant performance I think a lot of Seminole fans would be truly expecting. However, when you start breaking down this game, it's very tough to see a world in which Southern Miss can actually stay competitive throughout. It's easy to look at the massive talent difference. For the first time in years, Florida State is fielding a team that has at least three potential draft picks on it. Probably several first-round draft picks, but guys like uh, Jarrett Verse will probably be a top-five pick. Travis could play his way into the first round. He may even play his way higher if he wins a Heisman and Florida State wins a national championship. Jordan Travis could potentially be the first quarterback taken. So this is a team that has talent. Johnny Wilson, if he can fix his dropping problem in the offseason, looking, is looking to be a potential first-round player. The defense has players who could be potential first-round players as well, and with all this talent differential, I do believe Novell will get the team ready to play week two against Southern Miss. I don't expect Florida State to sleepwalk in this game, which is why I'm picking the Seminoles to win this one 45-14. Next up is Boston College. Now, as I said last year, and I'm going to repeat it here, Boston College has always had issues playing Florida State. It's been a long problem. Even when they had Matt Ryan, who probably won't be a Hall of Famer, but we, that's a different debate. But even when they had Matt Ryan, this is a team that's always struggled in Florida State, has had Boston College's number for about as long as the two teams have played each other. It's also at Boston College, so that helps them a little bit. Boston College normally does a little better against Florida State at home. I really don't believe this is going to be the turnaround year for Boston College. Their head coach desperately needs. Their head coach desperately needs a big turnaround year. A lot of people forget this now, but when 
Florida State hired Mike Novell. There were a lot of people that thought Florida State should hire the man coaching Boston College, who was the offensive coordinator at Clemson. A lot of people thought Florida State made the wrong choice. In hindsight, it's pretty obvious Florida State made the right choice, but it was it was a big thing at the time. A lot of people were unsold on Novell, and I think a lot of people probably are still very much on the fence about him. However, I do not think Boston College's head coach is going to turn it around this year. I think Boston College is going to have another rough year, and I suspect they'll be in the coach hunt next year. So, I have Florida State absolutely dominating Boston College for the second straight year. I got the Nords winning 51-17. to So, as we begin to move on here, now, now we have what is probably going to be Florida State's toughest game at Clemson. Week 4, September 23rd. Florida State battles probably our most damaging rival. They're not the most hated. That will forever be those damn Gators. But probably the rival that has caused the most damage to Florida State in the last couple years is Clemson. When the Florida State program collapsed in 2016, it left a massive hole. And Clemson rushed in to fill that hole. As Florida State's program has slowly started to rise from the ashes, it seems that Clemson's program has started to go in the wrong direction. Not only has Clemson not been in the playoffs in two years, they haven't even been close. This is a team that doesn't seem like the same dominant monster team they were just a few years ago. They have not been able to replace quarterback Trevor Lawrence, and I don't know that Clemson's young quarterback who finished their season last year against Tennessee and North Carolina I don't know that he is truly the answer to bring the Tigers back to national dominance. However, this game is Florida State's toughest game all year because it's at Clemson. There might not be a tougher place in the country to play these days than at Clemson. And and Clemson's talent is still actually a little better than Florida State's. Dabo Sweeney has won two national championships. Mike Norfell has yet to even win an ACC championship. So I can't, in all good consciousness, say I think Mike Norvell is a better coach. The reality is, on almost every level, it feels that Clemson has an advantage. Also, Clemson was able to bring back the vast majority of the contributors last year from a team that also won 10 games last year. But Clemson did embarrass themselves in the ball game against Tennessee, where they seemed like they really didn't even deserve to be there. I had some question watching that game whether or not Florida State would have performed better in that game. I also felt like Florida State should have played USC instead of Tulane, which I thought was a drastic mistake, but that's neither here nor there. Clemson is, in a lot of ways, the same team they were a year ago, and Florida State is. Now, when you break down position to position, which you see, Florida State has an advantage at quarterback, running back, defensive line. But Clemson has advantages at offensive line, defensive secondary, and wide receiver. I also think Clemson has an advantage at coach, because I think Dabo is just a little bit better right now than Mike Norvell. All this adds up to me finding it very difficult to believe that Florida State will head to Death Valley and get our first win in years. So I actually am taking Clemson to be Florida State's first loss of the season. I got Clemson winning this one 35-32 at home, which is a big loss early in the year for Florida State because Clemson is probably Florida State's biggest competitor to the ACC title this year. Not one of the teams from the other side of the conference. I really believe that whether Florida State or Clemson comes out of that side of the conference, they will claim the ACC championship and maybe even a playoff spot. Florida State gets a week off the week after Clemson. On the week of September 30th, the Seminoles play no one, which is going to be good. You, 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 that's a really tough first four-game schedule. There's some tough games later in the year, but out of all of the stretches in the schedule this year, that is the toughest one because you have LSU, who's probably going to be 7, and Clemson, who will probably be 10 or 11. I actually think Clemson will probably be 8 or 7 when Florida State plays them because I think Clemson will probably also win their first three games. I really think we'll have two top five teams playing in that game in Death Valley. I think it would be at night. I think game day will probably be there. So you, you lose that one, and that's a lot of emotion. You lose a close one, 35-32, tons of emotion. So the bye week is going to be much needed. Then Florida State dust off an old hated opponent, a team we haven't played in years as we prepare to play Virginia Tech. Now, last time we played Virginia Tech, Willie Taggart was the coach, and old Slick Willie led Florida State to an embarrassingly 
one-sided home loss to the Hokies. But actually, Florida State historically has been very effective against Virginia Tech. Now, Virginia Tech is trying to break in a new coach just six weeks into the season, so we have a better idea in real life, in real time, whether or not this Tech team poses an actual threat to Florida State. But when you look at it, Virginia Tech doesn't really have players anymore. Virginia Tech doesn't really have elite talent anymore. Virginia Tech doesn't have a mystique anymore. And it's in Dope Campbell Stadium. It'll probably be a 3-30 game because I anticipate 3-1 and one Florida State will be playing a 3-3 three and three or maybe even 3-2 and two or 4-2 and two Virginia Tech team. Who I, just don't, I don't see them turning around in one year. I don't know about the coach. I really don't. He may be great, but even then, I don't think they have the horses to turn this around in one year. So this is always the most dangerous kind of game. You have a talented team like Virginia Tech who has nothing to play for. Now, guys, I don't know which weekend Parents Weekend is this year. Now, Parents Weekend is a tremendously bad weekend for Florida State. If you look at it, Florida State has struggled on Parents Weekend pretty much, period, as long as the team has been around. Hopefully, Parents Weekend this year will be like week two against Southern Miss. Because if it's down at the end of the season against Miami, that's really bad. Last year, we played Wake Forest on Parents Weekend. I just hope that this Virginia Tech game isn't Parents Weekend. As long as I watch Florida State, every time they have a Parents Weekend, it's a really bad performance by the football team. I guess the players are distracted with the parents being there. I really wish they wouldn't do Parents Weekend during a game, but I guess the parents pay a lot of money for their kids to go there, and they would like to watch a game. Probably not like to watch us lose every time, but that's how it works. So if this game's Paris Weekend, you really just any game is Parents Weekend, you can flip a coin. But this is one of the games that could be Parents Weekend this year. I'm not sure what it is not listed on the schedule. I don't even know if it's been set yet. But this is one of the games that could. But balling Parents Weekend, I don't think Virginia Tech has the talent. I don't think Virginia Tech has the coaches. I don't think Virginia Tech has the players. I have Florida State beating Virginia Tech to move to 4-1 and on the season. I have them beating Virginia Tech 38-22 at home. And I, I do think it's, it's a big win for the Knowles because you're coming off that loss to Clemson. You're probably going to slide down to around 9, 10, 11, whatever. It kind of depends on where Florida State starts. But you're going to slide down around that 9, 10 range. And there's not a ton of games the rest of the way through the schedule to make a big impact. That The LSU and Clemson, Florida State kind of needs LSU and Clemson to be good this year because it's a pretty overall mediocre schedule. Unless, you know, Miami and Pittsburgh and Virginia Tech and Florida decide to actually be good this year. And in which case, it's an extremely tough schedule and my prediction will probably look really bad. But... The Florida State moves to four and one as we head as we stay home to play Syracuse. Now Syracuse has never beaten the Seminoles ever, and for the most part, Syracuse has struggled pretty much since joining the ACC last year. They seem like a legitimately good football team until the quarterback got hurt, but I just I can't see in my view Syracuse ever really beating Florida State. Maybe that's just me being biased, but I've watched a lot of Syracuse and Seminole games, and it always feels like Florida State smacks Syracuse around. Except for that, except for that one game, Norvell's second season, that came down to the last call. This one's at home in Tallahassee. You're going to have a, a runaway train of a Seminole team rated in the top 10 playoff aspirations. This is the perfect spot for a big upset. However, I still don't see it. Syracuse will be a much better team this year, I think. I think they'll be a lot more like they started last year. But I don't think it'll make a difference. I have Florida State dominating Syracuse for the second consecutive year, 44-10. to And the reason is, I don't think Syracuse can stop Florida State's running game. Much like Alabama during the early years of the Saban dynasty, this Mike Norvell team is going to attempt to run the football first and foremost, even with a talented quarterback like Jordan Travis. So Florida State is now 5-0, and and this schedule here, as you can see, says homecoming against Duke the next week. Now, it's kind of weird to have homecoming after three consecutive home games, so I find myself wondering if that's actually accurate. Most likely homecoming's not set, and that's just a placeholder, but it doesn't matter. We're just going to go with it. Homecoming, Duke, Tallahassee. This one, I'm not even going to get too deep into breaking now. Florida State will dominate Duke. I can not remember a year where Duke has really challenged the Knowles, so I got Florida State crushing Duke 31-10. to 10. 
And this three-game stretch here with Virginia Tech, Syracuse, and Duke is extremely important because these three teams are not likely to be very good football teams. In that final stretch of Florida State schedule, Wake Forest, Pittsburgh, Miami, and Florida could be very difficult, especially if Miami, Wake Forest, and Florida actually live up to their expectation for a change. I mean, Pittsburgh, Miami, and Florida. So I think Florida State needs these three wins, and I think they do need them to be fairly dominant because Florida State, hopefully by this point in the year, will be looking at a potential playoff berth. And because college football is such an outrageously biased sport, you are going to need impressive wins over teams like this. So I, I have Florida State winning these three games impressively. Now, at Wake Forest. Now, Wake Forest has shockingly and depressingly owned us. Owned us for the last couple years. It's, it's sad, actually. Last year's game against Wake Forest was the biggest embarrassment of the entire season. Florida State came out flat. They scored the opening touchdowns in like two minutes, but then didn't score again until Wake Forest was up 28-7. to Now, I did see a lot of fight in them as Florida State fought back, and if they could have got a fourth down stand late in the game, likely would have won that game. But the problem was there was just a very mealy mouth, half-assed effort last year against Wake Forest. It was, it was probably the worst game Norvell coached uh, at Florida State since the Louisville loss, the first half of that Louisville loss the season prior to that. Because there just was no energy or emotion in the stadium for Florida State. It's like they scored the first touchdown in, I think, seven plays or something like that. And there was this opinion that the game was already over. They, they got lazy. They got half-assed. They didn't work hard. They didn't try hard. They let Wake Forest go up and down the field. Their defensive coordinator failed to understand that Wake Forest's slow mesh point run plays, the best way to deal with those is to attack. And Florida State really big time struggled in the entire game. Shockingly, Wake Forest has absolutely dominated the Seminoles for a long time now. It's actually been a long time. Wake Forest more or less got Willie Taggart fired, as I mentioned in my downfall for the state video. If you guys haven't seen that yet, check it out. It's probably the best video I ever made. I'll link that in the description below for you guys. But more or less, Wake Forest contributed to the downfall of Taggart because we lost to them at Wake Forest, which I believe is the last time Florida State was at Wake Forest. Florida State lost to Wake Forest because Taggart thought a 51-yard field goal in the driving lane was a better decision than going for it on fourth down and one with a kicker who had never made a 50-yard field goal in any conditions. It was an embarrassingly bad coaching decision. So Florida State does need to get back over on the Deacons, but let's start thinking of Wake Forest as a doormat. They've actually been a pretty good team for the last seven or eight years. And while I, my instincts keep telling me Wake Forest is going to snap back this year and go back to reality because they lost so many players and they don't really recruit like a Florida State, so they don't really get to reload. But the coaching staff is great. They seem to always get the best out of them. I expect Wake Forest to be like they have been the last four or five years. I expect them to win somewhere between seven and nine games, and I think they're going to be a tough out for anyone. But actually, oddly enough, I think the fact that this game is at Wake Forest actually helps Florida State. Don't get me wrong, the Norths have been improving at home under Norvell, and that's good because not defending the Doke is unacceptable. But there's a lot more expectation at home. Coming into this game on the road, it's just you versus the world. If Florida State focuses, we are better than Wake Forest. We were better than Wake Forest last year. So I have Florida State winning this game for the first time in, God, I don't even know, like six years. I have Florida State winning this game 24-21, knocking off Wake Forest, who I really don't know what the record will be, but I do think this is a quality win for Florida State, regardless of what, you know, you're here on TV. So now Florida State will be 7-1 and one as we prepare to head to Pittsburgh. Now, Pittsburgh, I think, is the trap game. Every year, every team trying to go into the playoffs or head to the national championship or any kind of or the ACC championship is always got one game that you circle on the calendar. This is the trap game. This right here is your trap game. This is the trap game, guys. 
Florida State at Pittsburgh. I don't think Pittsburgh is going to win 9 or 10 games. I don't even think Pittsburgh is going to represent their side of the conference in the ACC title game. We'll get to that eventually. But I do think Pittsburgh has enough talent, enough skill, and they'll coach well enough that at home, late in the year, with a 7-1 Seminole team that will be ranked in the top five, coming in to pull off a playoff altering upset. And remember, I have Florida State losing to Clemson. So in the scenario we're creating here, a loss to Pittsburgh would most likely also knock Florida State out of the ACC title game as well because then Clemson would have to lose three games instead of just two. And that's a, that's a tall order. So I suspect this one will be very tough. It also is late in the year, so it may even be snowing, which is a huge disadvantage for Florida State. As long as Travis stays healthy, I think Florida State is in a different team now. Because I think Travis is a different quarterback. Last year, he put the team on his back and played Superman against both Florida and Oklahoma. And I believe Travis is Travis has always had a little bit of that magic in his career. He's always made big plays when we need him to make big plays. In past, the team has let him down, but they didn't last year. So I think this game is going to be tough. I think it's going to be cold. I think it might be snowing. I think it's going to be a sloppy game. I think Florida State is going to struggle offensively for a lot of it. However, I predict Florida State wins this one 31-27, which will not help. You're going to hear a lot of pundit talk after that because Florida State's, these two games, Wake Forest and Pittsburgh, will both be against unranked opponents. So you're going to hear a lot of pundits being like, oh, well, this Florida State team isn't really good enough. They shouldn't be a playoff contender. They, they're not beating these teams 50-7. to But it doesn't really matter. We'll be fine. So following the big win over Pittsburgh to go to 8-1, Florida State gets ready to play Miami. But before we get into that, guys, if you haven't already and you like the video, please like, share, and subscribe. It helps out a ton. I'm going to start doing a lot more football content on this video. So if you guys enjoy the football content, hit that subscribe button because there's going to be a lot more of it when the season actually turns around and kicks off. So Florida State at home against Miami. Now last year, this may have been my favorite game of the whole season. It was great. It was absolutely great. Miami was beaten, victimized, and conquered by Florida State. Miami was annihilated by Florida State. The game was over before halftime. Travis and the running backs and the defense, everybody had so much fun. Miami last year shocked me. My worst prediction in my prediction video for Florida State last year was that Miami would go 11-1. I thought Miami still had players. And I thought the new head coach was the answer. And I wasn't the only one. Miami was a top 10 team when they headed to Texas A&M and lost because the receiver can't catch footballs. I'm not getting suckered in two straight years. This Miami team is not going to win 11 games. They're not going to win 10. They're not going to win 9. They're not going to win 8. They're probably going to win in that 7 or 6 range. They are not going to the ACC Championship. They... Miami, in spite of how much money they spent this offseason buying players, which is allowed now, this team still feels to me like they're in disarray. Ray, if you look at the breakdown of the matchup between Florida State and Miami last year, what you know coming in is that Florida State loves to run counter, and I bet we'll love to run counter this year. It's one of Norvell's favorite plays. But for some reason, it took to the beginning of the third quarter before Miami actually adjusted to try to stop counter. By that point, the game was over. This is bad coaching. This is a coaching staff that did not adjust quickly enough to Florida State's favorite offensive play. The reason I point that out is I'm not entirely sold on Miami's head coach anymore. I'm not. I'm not even slightly sold on Miami's head coach. So because of that, I, I think Miami's going to be kind of limping into this game for the, like infinity straight year. It's in Tallahassee, but I would never, never pick a game, Florida State-Miami game, like the one I saw last year. Typically, this game is close regardless of how good they are. Sometimes the Florida-Florida State games get a little screwy, and they turn into big blowouts, but you almost never see this game. So I think this game is going to be fun and competitive, high-scoring-ish, and I also think both teams will have opportunities in this game. But, again, 
breaking down the teams, Florida State's offensive line, I believe, is a little bit worse than Miami's. Florida State's receiving core is better than Miami's. Florida State's quarterback is better than Miami. Our running backs are better than Miami's. Our defensive line is better than Miami's. Our linebackers are better than Miami's. I think Miami has a better second day. And I also think Mike Norvell is a better coach than Miami's. So I have Florida State winning this one 38-28 to move to 9-1 and for the first time and what seems like 700,000 lifetimes. I cannot remember the last time Florida State was 9-1. and one. So coming off that victory, you're headed, you're staying home to play North Alabama, the line. Both Florida and Florida State play a typical D2 school the weekend before playing each other. It's a glorified bye week. It's basically a, uh, a practice game. You get a chance to run your first team out for maybe a quarter or two and get some play. Now, it is true these D2 schools can sometimes get you. Florida State lost their first game to a D2 school in school history a couple years ago, so they can sometimes get you. But this isn't the same thing. This isn't a Florida State team that would end up 5-7. and seven. We have Florida State coming to this game at 9-1 and one, and the third-rated team in the country. This is, this is academic. This is, I, I have Florida State absolutely and utterly and completely dismantling this team who just came in to get a payday. It's blood money. I have Florida State winning 65-13. to 13. I don't think Travis will play out of the first half. I think probably a little bit slower than we'd like as Seminole fans. Like I'm not thinking that Florida State's going to score the first three times they get the ball. But the thing is, Florida State's a primary running team now. So when you play teams that are a lot worse than you, it's a lot easier to dominate them because it's a lot easier to be dominant when you run. You don't risk as many mistakes. So Florida State, I think, will absolutely dominate this. Now, I don't care if we're 11-1 and one or 1-11. One there is one game that every Seminole fan knows is the most important football game of the year. That is those fucking Gators. It is in Gainesville this year. Now, Florida has had a tumultuous offseason. The team had the second most transfer portal departures of any team in college football behind Texas A&M. Florida had over 20 players leave to go somewhere else. Now, Florida had the eighth ranked recruiting class, I believe, eight or nine, somewhere in that range. So they brought in a lot of young players. They lost a quarterback who, for some reason, a lot of people think is a decent a decent potential starting quarterback. I don't know why. I saw some of his games last year. I watched Florida play Kentucky. His best game of his entire career in Gainesville was the one against Florida State last year in Tallahassee. He tried to will the Gators to a win. I think a lot of the hype around him is based off that game. Because he, he put on a cape and played Superman. Travis was just a lot more Superman. I... I do feel like this year is going to be more the same. I think Florida State will come in at 10-1. and 1. I think Florida State will be the third-rate team in the country. I think Florida will be around seven, have around seven wins, somewhere, somewhere between five and seven wins coming in. But I still think in Gainesville, Florida, Florida State is going to be a very competitive game. I think Florida would love nothing more than to beat Florida State the last game of the year because if our predictions are accurate, Florida State is already headed to the ACC title game because I have Clemson losing more than two games. Uh, Florida State is two games away, Florida, in the ACC title game from punching their ticket to the playoffs for the first time in the 2014-2015 season. So I think Florida would give up their soul to beat Florida State in this game and in Florida State's chances to head in to the playoffs. When you look at the two teams, I don't know anything about the Gators. They've lost so much to the draft. They lost so much in the transfer portal. This is a brand new team. They could be anywhere from that kind of sneaky, really good team like Tennessee, where this is like two potential playoff teams playing in Gainesville late in the year, a de facto playoff game. Or they could be a complete train wreck and be like three, have like two or three wins coming in, and the coach has already been fired. I don't think Billy Napier is a very good coach. He wastes his time out. I don't think he manages the clock well. I don't think he he didn't manage the clock well against Florida State. He didn't manage the clock well against Kentucky. 
They still have to play Georgia, who is maybe still the best team in college football. We'll, we'll get to that. But probably not. They still have to play Tennessee, who's good. They Who knows who they pull out of the other side of the conference. They, they play LSU. They always do. I do think that Florida will come in with a bit of a rough record. I don't think Florida will be ranked. And Florida State will be top three. This game will be hyper-competitive for the whole game. I even would anticipate Florida having a slight advantage in the game through a lot of it. I think the home crowd will rally them to play the best football they play all year, like last year. But I have Florida State winning this one 41-38 to finish the first 11-1 regular season since that 2014-2015 season when Florida State was undefeated in the regular season. However, I think this ticket was already punched before this game. I think Florida State, even though we lost to Clemson, I don't think I think Clemson will be 9 and 3 again. Uh, I think Florida State heads to the ACC Championship game and the opponent I have for them for the third for the second year in a row is North Carolina. I think North Carolina is a very very good team under former Texas great Mac Brown. And I think this North Carolina team, which Rake May is coming back, is a potential, a potential spoiler to everyone's playoff picks because Drake Mays is a great quarterback. If this North Carolina team can find some defense to go along with them, this could potentially be a very good football team. But Florida State, North Carolina, so I think coming into the game, I don't think North Carolina is going to find that defense. I have North Carolina at 9-3 and three or 10-2. and two. Forgive me for the all, but this, like I said, this is before the, even the spring games. If you're watching this when I upload it, you know what I mean. It's months so the season even starts. I don't think North Carolina is going to be a playoff contender coming into this game. I think the problem is going to be they let people score on them quite a lot. Obviously, I think Florida State will be four, three or four coming into the game. And all they're going to need to do to make their first playoff appearance for the first time since Jimbo Fisher is win this game. And I think that's a lot easier said than done. I, I think Florida State will come out nervous. I think Florida State will play nervous. I think it will be one of those games where North Carolina pulls out to like a 17-point lead early in the game, and a lot of the Seminole fans are sitting on our couches with our head in our hands thinking, oh, we were so close. But I actually think I think Jordan Travis, Florida State, and the defense will find ways to get back in the game and gradually chip away. I have Florida State winning the ACC title for the first time in like eight years. I have Florida State winning the ACC title, beating North Carolina 44-42. Now, Florida State is in the playoffs. I have Florida State at three, but they could also be at four. It could change my prediction if Florida State ends up at four, but I don't think so because the the jumping down to four just means you end up playing Alabama. So my playoff bracket for this year, which is relevant now that I have Florida State being in the playoffs, but my playoff bracket for this season, with my playoff bracket for the 2023 college football season, is I have Alabama at number one. I have Michigan at number two. Now, anybody who puts in the comment section below that the Buckeyes will be the two team, and this is finally the year you guys get back over on Michigan, I am completely fine with that choice because I, I, I could see it. I really could. At three, I have Florida State because I really think this is Florida State's year to get back to the playoffs. I think everything lines up. I think the schedule is pretty manageable, as I mentioned. I think... Uh, I think Clemson or LSU will be Florida State's solo loss. And yeah, you can flip either one of those games. If it's it's LSU, it's even easier for Florida State to get into the playoffs. But I think Clemson or LSU will be Florida State's solo loss. I don't think a lot of the games in the middle of the schedule are that hard. I do think we'll have some tough ones. But I think Florida State will manage expectations and get into the playoffs. And the final spot, I have USC. So, Alabama, USC, Florida State, Michigan. I do not know what a semifinal games are played this year, so I don't know how much of an advantage this is for anybody. But when I'm going to pick the first playoff game first, and I have Alabama beating USC to advance to the national championship. Now, I know there is an idea that the Alabama dynasty is dead. But honestly, I don't think so. I think Georgia lost a lot of players to the draft this year. I think Georgia will not make it to the semifinals this year because I think Bama will have their best year in a while. Now, you might think to yourself, Bama lost by Young. And if they were anybody else, anybody else, I'd say forget Alabama. 
they lost a truly great quarterback. And to be perfectly honest, I may be giving them too much credit because they have that big A. And they've been so good for so long, it's hard to not see Alabama in the playoffs. I mean, this would be like the third year with them not in the playoffs. I just, I don't see it. So, Alabama beats USC to move on to the semifinal. That brings us to Florida State and Michigan, a national semifinal game. Now, Michigan, this will be Michigan's third straight playoff appearance. Michigan has kind of let their fans down a little bit in the playoffs. I mean, losing to TCU last year was an embarrassment. Georgia proved TCU had no business in the same stadium with Michigan or Georgia. They were an absolute joke, and they gave us the worst national title game of all time. However, I I think a large part of that was true sleepwalking. I just think Michigan looked at TCU like they were they were they, they were already in the playoffs. Michigan already figured I was we're already in the national title game. We'll get ready. We'll watch the Ohio State Georgia game. We're gonna play that team. But instead, Michigan kind of came out lazy. This year, I do not see that happening. I think Michigan will be mad. I have Michigan at twelve and zero. For the second straight year, talk about crazy, but all eleven and one, it really doesn't matter. Even if Michigan and Florida State have the same record, Michigan will still be two. I really think this is probably the year that Michigan finally puts it all together in terms of winning their playoff game. As much as it pains me to say this, I have Michigan beating Florida State forty-two forty-one. Now, honestly. That's a very unlikely score, but I just have Michigan winning by less than three points. And then I have Michigan playing Alabama in the national semifinal game. I think we'll get a better national semifinal game this this year, but I don't think, unfortunately, pains me to say this, I just, the SEC is just too dominant with the talent the conference has. I think... Florida State probably would have had a better chance against Bama than Michigan, even though I think Michigan would beat them. I just don't think Michigan still, I'm not sure Michigan has the elite speed they need to compete with an Alabama. And I, I think the Tide beat Michigan 37-31, and Alabama wins the first national championship in a couple of years. But I could actually see this going anyway. I could see Michigan winning a national title. I could see Florida State winning a national title. I could see USC winning a national title. The main reason I picked Michigan to beat the Knowles, and I've, I've gone back and forth on it quite a lot. Part of me wants to just like break down the bracket and completely redo it and have Florida State play Alabama. Which, by the way, doesn't change my opinion of who will win that game. And it doesn't honestly change my opinion of the score very much either. I still think it'd be somewhere in that one score win for the Tide. Or even if you throw Bama out and put Georgia in that game, I still think the outcome is the same. So essentially, I think the SEC champion will play the Big Ten champion, and the SEC champion will beat the Big Ten champion by one score. I think the ACC champion will play the Big Ten champion in the uh, semifinal, and I think the Pac-12 champion, which will be USC, will play Alabama or Georgia, or Florida, or LSU, or whoever represents the SEC in the semifinal. I mean, I would love to predict the SEC to lose. I'm tired, as everyone is, about of the SEC. It makes so much money. I'd seen a thing they were talking about where Florida State was complaining at the ACC for not making more money. And, and the SEC makes like more money than every one of the other conferences put together. So... It's tough to compete with that. Money, unfortunately, rules the world and money buys everything. So the SEC wins another national championship. This will still be a absolutely phenomenal season. Florida State would have made it to the playoffs for the first time in years. Florida State would have won the ACC for the first time in years. Florida State would have lost a very narrow playoff game or even a very narrow national championship game. If you guys want to be super excited and say Florida State somehow beats Michigan and Bama, hey, the damn nerd will be pissing his pants with cheering. I'll probably be so drunk I won't remember it. The celebration will be all night. But there's a big spotlight, I think, when you haven't played in a game like this in a long time. Michigan, this will be your third game in a row. I just feel like the lights are going to be a little too bright for a Florida State team that hasn't even been to an ACC title game in years. I picked them to be win the ACC, but do it in a kind of struggling way where the team is struggling to kind of get everything together for a lot of that game. I just think it would be similar against Michigan, where Michigan will build a fairly large lead and Florida State will battle back, but be unable to score enough to actually win. But either way, great. 
this would be a fantastic outcome. We got a new football facility that should hopefully be up by uh, early next year. We have a lot, a lot of five-star players right now. Out of the 35, I think Florida State has four or five five-star players that have come to visit. A good amount of them are trending Florida State's way. I feel like they're waiting to see if last year was a fluke. Nobody wants to go to a team that's going to go five and seven. Of course, I don't know why the five-star players don't realize that if they choose to go somewhere, they're likely not going five and seven, but nobody wants to go to a team that goes five and seven. This is the year... Last year was the year to prove that Mike Norvell was the right guy for the job. This is the year to make a statement. And the statement is, we are back. And I do predict this year will be the year that Florida State finally replants the spear and lets all of college football know, once again, to fear the spear. Because for the first time in years, I think Florida State wins the ACC, goes to the playoffs, and I think it's the start of a dominant ACC stretch. I don't think, the way Clemson kind of started to slide, I think this could be another 5, 10, or 15 years of Florida State completely dominating the Atlantic Coast Conference. Although, I do actually think Florida State will probably head to the SEC in two years, but I do believe Norvell's the right guy, at the right place, at the right time, to finally... Finally, we reward all of our patience for the previous six or seven seasons of misery. Last year was a great start, but you have to build on it. Mike Norvell has to make this the year. This is it. This is the year that we finally remind college football just who the hell we are. So, thanks guys for watching. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. If you made it through this whole extremely long video, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed it. Once again, I have two videos on Florida State right now. You may want to check out. They should be coming on the screen uh, now or in a minute. Both are good. One covers the downfall of Florida State, how it happened, and how Norvell has done so much to repair it. And the other covers the reason that Jimbo, Jimbo's time at Florida State ended so unbelievably badly. There's also a good amount of video game content on the channel. I'm probably going to move more progressively away from that as time goes on. I haven't really found that my video game content is very popular with people, so I'm probably going to go more to football. I'm more passionate about football anyway. And I will continue to do more football videos as time comes goes on. So again, I thank you. I appreciate you. I hope you enjoyed the video, and come on back next time, because we will once again be talking about Florida State football. Thanks, guys, and go Knowles.